Welcome to Talmudic Treasures. Today we are learning Sota, page 27, which introduces us to a new chapter, which addresses a very important question. This entire tractate is discussing the situation where you have a woman who is in question. Because she secluded herself with another man, and we're not sure what the status was, did she in fact commit adultery? Or did she just leave it at that, and in fact she did not commit adultery? So she has to go through this whole lengthy process of being brought to the Kohen and going through this entire ceremony, including drinking this mesota, this special drink, in which will test her to be able to see whether or not she was faithful. And in fact, if she was not faithful, then she will receive a punishment from this exact drink. And many people sometimes look when we deal with gender between a man and a woman that sometimes would say this seems to be very unfair because we spend so much time in an entire Gemara, an entire text focusing on this unfaithful woman and that if she's guilty that she is going to be punished. But how about the man? There were two people that were together secluded. So in this, the Talmud here introduces this chapter by saying that it's not exclusive. It's not only the woman. The Talmud says that just like the water tests her, so does the water test him, the adulterer. Now, it doesn't mean, of course, that we bring this suspected man to drink. This is something in which only she drinks. We don't find that we actually physically bring the man in question to the Kohen and do, does all these procedures. It's only the woman. However, if in fact she is guilty and she is punished upon drinking it, this other man, this other adulterer, no matter where he may be, will just automatically basically die as he's in work or walking in the street, all of a sudden he would literally just drop dead. And we see from here, first of all, the importance of understanding that what is face value is not necessarily the reality. That even though it looks like we're being extremely harsh to this woman for committing adultery, we are going to exact the same punishment for the man who commits the same act of sin. So therefore, it's not just that she gets punished and the adulterer gets to walk around scot-free. No, that man is also going to be held equally as accountable. And therefore, when the Torah says something in which on the surface it may not seem fair or logical, or maybe in the Torah it may look like that we favor men and women are second-class citizens, that is totally inaccurate. That is not true. You're allowed to ask and say, this doesn't make sense. Of course, we want you to ask. But there is an answer. And the answer will always be that men and women, yes, they are different, but not that men are better than women. Not that women are better than men. We have different roles. But at the end of the day, when it comes to punishments, we are going to say that they are exactly the same. All we need to do is ask better questions and dig a little bit deeper before we just automatically assume the worst when we don't really know all the facts. But it also teaches us this notion of karma, if you will, that we can understand the woman who's drinking, we're going to see that she's being punished. And we'll understand when she's being punished and why she's being punished. But there's a man that, again, at that same moment where she gets punished, he also is going to get punished, but it's not at the temple. It's somewhere far away, possibly. He could have been, again, at some other location, and he dies, and no one has any idea. No one knows the real reason. It could be he could have died of natural causes. He could have, unfortunately, had something wrong with his heart, or it could be that is an actual punishment. The reality is we don't know. We don't know the answers to why things necessarily happen, but the reality is if we have a moon and faith in God, we understand that there is a reason why things do happen.